This is Earthbound. And on the old background that would make a good flannel shirt, we're gonna start a new game, and because I don't like driving you mad with anything other than my incessant babbling, we're setting our tech speed to fast. I was gonna just write beef, but we got a lot of room to play around with. Let's go sillier. Beef. I think we'll make that our favorite homemade food. Favorite thing. This is going to determine what something is called. I don't want to get too specific with what this exactly means. The default name is Rocket. So this time, we're rolling. <laughs> What's going on with our neighbors? Uh, uh, wow, uh, you, you must be really... He, he doesn't want me to leave. I, I can't get out of this. <laughs> I guess he's really scared and doesn't want to be left here alone at a time like this. I mean, who can blame him? I said myself that I'd be terrified in the situation, but that was kind of funny. Don't you know what time it is? Get your butt home, pronto. <laughs> you know what to do. Shout to the heavens for help and the magical text of helpfulness will float down from the skies. Uh, when you eat it, you'll recover about 30 HP. Well, we can't do anything here, so with nothing else, I say we just kind of head back and go home. And we hope that that terrifying face that stares directly into your soul and beyond it is not there waiting for you to come home after sneaking out. It's late. Scoot off to bed now. With a face like that, I'd rather not be sleeping in proximity to you at a time like this. Oh, Ness, you don't understand the importance of a good night's sleep. I've changed my mind. I think refusing you is even scarier than falling asleep. We'll take our chances and hope we're still here in the morning. You can come back here at any time to heal, complete with some mother personality. You're hungry already? Why don't you have some beef? Pokey, you don't like beef, do you? Too bad! Ah, <laughs> uh, the secret ingredient is snark to her homemade cooking. I'm, you know... Just like before, we are able to hear, heal here at absolutely any time. And don't worry, you only have to sit through the photographer's spiel one time. I thought our public library system was bad, but sheesh. Do you want to borrow one? Nah. A man without a map isn't popular with the girls. Do you want one now? No. A man without a map isn't popular with the girls. Do you want one now? A man without a map isn't popular with the girls. Do you want one now? Okay. Here's a map. Ness dug around in the trash can. Well, let's see here. There is a hamburger inside. Ness takes it. Yeah. It's no different from the one that we just bought inside. Lesson learned. Dig through the garbage can of your favorite fast food restaurant if you want to avoid paying. It's, it's great. Every person I've ever known that has played this, even if they didn't like the game that much, they at least chuckled at that one. That's a great one. And you know what? Learning by our example. Let's see here. There was just plain old garbage in the trash can. Ah, Just like Gashapons, I guess. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Earthbound. Getting used to that title. The la la. <laughs> Not getting used to that. Last time. Nice touch. It was you. You beat it, my buddy, didn't you? You'd better just beat it. I got news for you, buddy. I know this game very well, and you'd be saying that even if I didn't fight a single enemy on the way here. I used to speed run this game, so not fighting a single enemy on the way here was common for me. Maybe his buddy was the Starman Jr., and they had some sort of, like, interdimensional relationship going on. I'm sorry, buddy. Long-distance relationships are rough, especially the ones that are across time and space. Hamburger! I'm Frank. You are... Come on. Can't you at least say your name? No, oh, man, I'm a silent protagonist. Ness abandoned the cookie. How could you? It, I always thought it sounded kind of funny, just like how dramatic that sounds, like Ness abandoned the cookie. Magic butterflies. They make you relax. What does that mean? You recover 20 PP every time that you meet one of those. There's a lot of rooms throughout the game that have no enemies in them and are just kind of isolated. I know this one's not really a room per se, but it's the first example of it, so we're rolling with it. We witnessed the very inspiring image of a giant foot that will help us save the world. It's our first step on the journey. <laughs> Talk to Pokey at the meteor site. Go home and go to bed. Get the cracked bat from Tracy's room. 
enlist King's help, find Picky, talk to BuzzBuzz, Buzz, get the soundstone from BuzzBuzz Buzz in Pokey's house, get a map of the town, defeat Frank, get a key to the cabin from the mayor, defeat the Titanic ant, learn the sound at the giant step, FIGHT THE POLICE! Hey you, the board says do not enter, couldn't you read it? Apparently you can't, it says don't enter, else. Hey, I'm in here! Go and find another can! Ha! Huh, I was just joking. This is a jail! You guys have no business being here. You know prisoners have such a sense of humor and are able to laugh at the predicament that they're in. You know, like all prisoners do. Hey look, Captain Strong! But it has a bit of a catch to it, and I'd like to see if maybe we can make that catch happen. That catchin'? No, that's a stretch even for me. <laughs> Good morning, good morning, good morning, yeah. Woken up from that, we'll definitely get our butts over to Polestar Preschool after we explore the town a little bit more. Like I said, inventory space is precious. Cycle shop! I know this bit. It's gonna cost a million dollars, but through my great skills of persuasion, I'm gonna talk the price down to zero. I've played this game before. I wanna see her someday. These are based on the Blues Brothers. Jake and Elwood. They were edited outside of Japan from their original black suits, like you see in the sign there, to look a little bit like Mario and Luigi. Why? Because Nintendo's not a big fan of law. Suits! <laughs> Been waiting to say that one. Great cruising music. We're screwing that story progress and going through the tunnel to the next town! I don't need no stinking other party members or anything. We made it to the other end of that tunnel. Don't lie to me, reality. You and I both saw that. For some reason, the bus returned to Tucson. Yup, just like I thought on it. Please choose something edible. Not a garbage can, you know. Did you hear that exit mouse? He called you garbage! Are you gonna stand for that? You know what I think? I think deep down, you really are a garbage can. Take the can of fruit juice. Thanks, you seem very nice. Uh, I wonder if maybe you would like to invest in some money in my inventions? Yes, 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 oh, uh, excuse me, I, I mean thank you. Uh, by the way, I could really use 200 bucks. I will be right back. Well, go ahead and make yourself comfortable anyway. You can flop down anywhere, even on this pile of tools. I'm racing him! I think I can win! I'm racing him! Ha! No passing zone, what do you think of that? Okay. Riding on my bike did make it pretty convenient to go and get that money. I'll give the bicycle that. We found out that Paula is nowhere to be seen, and this time, we begin our search. And my thinking was, what a better place to begin a search for a girl than in bed. Said that quite a few times in one sentence. I wanted to get rid of an item so that I could ditch that and thank you, Mon. You want to equip that there then? Yes, I want to get the 24 defense. I'm turning from Jamaican to Dracula to Mario. Yes, you can buy my cheaper bracelet, Mon. Everdread attacked. You know what, Everdread? Prepare to face the wrath of my ruler. Everdread has a big grin in his face. Let's use the ruler. Now you can figure out the length of things easily. Well, let's try selling an item that we can't sell. I'm not interested in one of those. Can you show me anything else? I understand, buddy. A great destiny to save the world. It's not the life for everyone. Sell the ruler. I'll offer about one dollar for that. Hopefully. Uh, Frank had a similar attack where he can say something nasty and lower your guts, but I was kind of saving it because... <laughs> Grumbling about today's youth doesn't work on the teddy bear! Apparently it's a vintage teddy bear, so he's above such remarks because he's overage. <laughs> wow! Okay, that was that was pretty funny getting to see that attack twice. I'm happy that we got to do that. <laughs> it's yours now. I won't fit in your back. No! Inventory space! Catch up! Why have you betrayed me? Shoes are all funny and fuzzy pickles and a really earthboundy way of keeping you from progressing, but I'm gonna make them very creepy. And no, they're not made of human veins or anything like that. This isn't the Pokedex. <laughs> According to official texts, they are not plants, but they grow out of the ground. The timing of that sounded like some kind of dramatic reveal. <laughs> Pictures taken instantaneously, I'm a pho- Oh wow, what a great photograph. It will always bring back the fondest of memories. 
One is chance, two is luck, three is a pattern. By going up, we can see that there is a present very out of reach, and I'm able to walk on the water in the wait, wait a minute, wait, we're doing that again. We are doing that again. Come on, how did I do that the first time? There are places where if you know how to rock out on the D-pad just right, especially if you press opposite directions at the same time, which is normally impossible with a standard controller, you can clip through walls, speedrunners do that. Come on. Yes, you can get on top of the water. That's kind of neat. Never knew about that area. I swear, for a guy who says he's played this game at least 30 times, I'm sure I'm learning a lot of new things. But welcome to Peaceful Rest Valley. We ain't playing around anymore. This is our first real attempt. And we are finally fighting some enemies. The Territorial Oak. He looks right through you. And uh, attacks right through you as well. You'll see what I mean momentarily. Finally, our Mr. Baseball cap is obsolete, raising our defense by nine. I've never bought a hat. I have exploration for that. Oh, that guy just clipped through a tree, didn't he? Uh, oh, no, no. Nice level up, Ness. Look at you. <laughs> uh, all right. We are right... Well, now we are. We have reached the end of Peaceful Rest Valley. As a kid, I had so much trouble getting through this. I was enjoying my time in Tucson. And this place was handing my head to me again and again and again and again and again. Also, Coil Snakes, why are you here? I finally got to the end of it after hours and hours and hours and hours of playing. And shortly after this point, I got a phone call. And because this was in an era before cell phones, I had to go run to the kitchen to go pick it up. Along the way, I kicked the cartridge while the game was still running. I came back for my phone call and the screen is filled up with a bunch of alphanumeric characters. I reset the system, my save files are all gone. This game was so lucky that Tucson was so good and that its text and characters were so charming because with any other game, I probably would have stopped playing it and not been here right now. So I guess that means I'm lucky, not so much the game. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Earthbound. Last time, we crossed the peaceful Valley of Rest. Peaceful Rest Valley. This time, we find ourselves surrounded by the happy, 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 happy village. Welcome to Happy Happy Village. I am just so overcome by its sheer immensity that I had to talk that way. This time, we are exploring. Your existence is a problem for me and my religion. Defy me and I'll end your pitiful game. He wasn't kidding. Nah, all he did was just teleport us next to the blue cow. <laughs> you got moved here because you gave Mr. Carpenter some lip. Uh, getting struck by lightning, best decision of my entire life. Spiteful crows. Spiteful crows. Spiteful crows. Hey, Ness. You're just here to bother me, aren't you? You can call me Master Pokey, since Carpenter made me an important person in Happy Happyism. You should join us. I know you won't. Glad I joined. I'm not going to fight you, but these guys will. Later, potato! Joke's on you, Pokey. You could only get once. You could only get two of your grunts to fight us. Others didn't want to volunteer, so you used a spiteful crow. I'm just gonna steamroll right over him. Now, it's time to tell you this video is sponsored by Hotel Onet. Why stay with gang leaders when you can stay with us for just thirty-five dollars a night? Located conveniently across the street from said gang leader with knives who allows people to stay at his place for free. One night stay will cost you $35. Look at just how much I am enjoying myself using their services. But don't you know where there's a crisis? You shouldn't be wasting your time. The text isn't formatted properly! That's supposed to be a line break where that dot is! Wow! Uh, oh. <laughs> I f 
feel accomplished! I discovered something probably very remote! On the way to show you that, I grew to level 19. To everyone. Here's the key to open the jail in the mountain cabin where Paula is being held. Take the key and go. Your backpack is- <laughs> Stop making serious moments stupid. Uh, okay. Ha! I lied! See ya, sucker! And you wonder why your parents don't like you. From this point, Ruffs, if they claw with their sharp nails, they hit pretty hard for what they are. For being the weak baddie, well, maybe they're more of the medium baddie, because Mr. <laughs> Mr. Batty is definitely the weak baddie. <laughs> I didn't even intend for that one. It's just sort of happening. It's like a sick sense of humor of some kind. All right. After coming all this way, Happy Happy Village happened to hold one of our sanctuary locations. A wee bit unsatisfying, wouldn't you say? Just auto-winning a fight where it's a little challenging to keep Paula alive through the whole thing. I'm going back in. So I guess that means we're fighting him multiple times. Just so you know, as penance for my punning, I'm actually going such a good idea after all, and instead take the pencil eraser and think it'd be a great idea to shove it right up the cows. You can't use the pencil eraser. Curse is foiled again. You... And things really are finally happy, happy in Happy Happy Village. Finally, I have a chance to apologize. Appreciate the sentiment, girl. I think you've gotten me stuck inside of a wall before and I wasn't able to move without resetting my game all because I wouldn't donate to your stupid cause because you wouldn't believe me when I said I didn't have any money. So yeah, appreciate it. Thank you for the apology. Oh, Paula. Am I dreaming? I feel like she just came home. He leaves to go look for her again. <laughs> Ouch, it's been a while since I've done this one. I didn't remember exactly what they said, but uh, how to make yourself feel like a scumbag in 10 easy steps. Ouch. Whenever somebody is dead, the game makes sure that you are aware of it by changing your window style from mint or peanut to bloody flavor. Hmm, tastes like pennies. Why, an official air freshener of this guy, the mock pizza delivery man. These things nowadays are relics. They are one of the rarest pieces of Earthbound merchandise. I've never owned one of these things. They go for crazy amounts, so crazy that I am not willing to tell you an exact dollar amount because it will probably be obsolete by next month. And if I try to highball it by future proofing this video, then people are going to start listing it for that much money just because one guy on the internet says it's worth that much. It's sadly how a lot of collecting works. Hello, mock pizza delivery. Here's your pizza pie, sir. That'll be $48. You have the money, don't you? Thank you very much. Ness is very confused, not certain of what's going on at all. <laughs> I thought I'd put a little PSA at the end of this video. If you happen to have one of those player's guides with the postcard to send away for the mock pizza air freshener and you're thinking about trying it right now, everything that I could find points to it not being a good idea and that your player's guide will be more valuable with the postcard still in it than not and you're probably not going to get it back. However, just hearing about it isn't good enough for me. Like a fool, I am going to send away for it so you don't have to. I will let you know status updates on this when I have them, and it will kind of be its own little side journey that we can follow. I started today by calling Nintendo Customer Service, and their answer was they don't actually know what happens, but they think it's rather curious that there is no expiration date on the postcard. So we're trying it, and we're going to see what happens. Hey, you got to see our show. You get to see our show, you lucky kid. I hope you pay attention. I want some bread. I need the coinage. I want more dough all the time. I wrote the lyrics to most of the Runaway 5 songs. Money, that's what I want. Money, that's what is hot. Money, that's what I want. Money, it's what we ain't got. Except freedom, freedom, freedom's what we've really sought. I'm tone deaf just like the guy in the lobby, and I apologize. I will not sing at all. Shabba doo wop diddly dee da shabba dee doo bee bop wah. I got those dead blues. Mm -hmm -hmm. 
If I had $10,000, I could pay off my debts and move on to the next town. I wonder if our bus still runs. It may be rusted out. Hey, sidewalk, get out of my way. Here it comes. Something I look forward to seeing every playthrough. Oh, no. Sometimes that dog is in the road and the bus will run right through him. I look forward every playthrough to knowing whether or not I get to see the dog get hit by a bus. Please don't read into that. That's his house when it's nighttime. I wish that they did that. I won't say anything to you adults, but I would stress that to you young kids, don't play for more than two hours. Anything excessive is no good. Parents opposing ob obsession plan. It stands for poop. <laughs> That's okay. We'll eed their warnings. <laughs> is going up here. I think it's right around this area. There is a garbage can. There is a teddy bear inside. Aw, poor thing. Who would have thrown you away? The hint man! It's okay, teddy bear. It's okay. I love you. You are too good for an NPC as useless as the Hint Man. There is a reason why they stuck the Earthbound Player's Guide in every copy of this game so no one would ever use them. It's called Karma. Alright, it's since mildly amusing, so we're gonna show it. This circus tent is seemingly a base of operations for the people trying to get rid of the zombies, which probably also has an equally funny abbreviation. Coil Snake? I took a back attack on purpose because I wanted to make sure- Yes! A coil snake with a unique battle background. <laughs> That's a new one. I don't think I've seen coil snakes here before. In before somebody links to an old video of me playing Earthbound where I saw a coil snake and had the exact same reaction, but I'm sorry, it's been 10 years and I can't remember everything that I've ever said. I try my best though, okay? When I queue up by two, I welcome a lot of HP and PP. You needed it. Okay. He stares into your soul. He looks you over. You know what sounds like a great idea? Going back to town, resting up in the hotel a second time, now that we have seen that, and having some top-notch grade A, one-of-a-kind nightmares. Hey, we're recreating childhood, aren't we? You are a friend who we've never met, but you are our one and only hope. Getting dressed in light speed. Ah, Jeff, I just dreamt that you and I were taking a walk. Record to your journey just like Ness's dad. And he's the only one that we're able to call. We're on the road. We're hoofing it. We are ex-convicts now, escaping from the prison that is elementary school. That's what my friends and I called it. And we go down and we see some various official policey looking dudes with binoculars. Word has gotten out that we are escaped. We need to hurry, Bubble Monkey. You need to hurry, come on, Bubble Monkey. Yes, okay, you made it, good. All right, we just gotta get through these woods without them turning and facing us so we don't get returned to the Snowwood boarding house. All right, I'm gonna take him out from behind. Let's go for a headshot. So, you've also been bitten by Tessie Mania. Into these tents. going to become intense. I'm the cook for the Tessie Watching Club. That's night. That's boring. Well, we get to see winters in the daytime. Uh. I'm getting Mike Wazowski. No! <laughs> the leaf is covering his face! I'm a photographic genius if I do say so myself. Wow, what a great photograph! It will always bring back the fondest of memories! Thank you for that photo, man. Thanks a lot. Percent spawn rates? Speaking of which, the Mad Duck! Look at that face. Just look at it. Look at it, I said. It has a few attacks. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Earthbound. Last time, we were rescued from the jaws of death in the depths of the graveyard by... Jeff. Hey, he's more reckless than he looks. This time, a 
Gorg! It's the boogie tent! He doesn't live under the bed, he's the blanket on top of it, which sounds even more scary because you're already wrapped up inside of him once you realize he's got you. This is a strange boss for- Ness is all out of PP, we're doing it anyway. York, York! Since you had fly, honey, I considered you a friend. But actually, you're just a commoner. I am the mortal enemy of your kind. What is the mortal predator of humans? Why? The mini barf. Little did we know that whenever we get sick, we give birth to the mortal enemy of our kind. That's some deep stuff. This guy is up. They're pretty annoying little nuisances, but I can't help but love their little faces. They just look so silly, and I like how they're shiny and they're armored frogs. They also kind of look like turtles. You're attacking. Uh, <laughs> the ghost got a smash attack? You're dead! You don't have any guts left to fill your meaty insides! What? Okay. Alright, um... I'm kinda wondering if I should just let Ness die at this point, because I feel like he would be less of a burden dead than alive. But this is the very scenario that I bought the Lucky Sandwich for. Let's see. Is the Lucky Sandwich as useful as it seems? HP is maxed out. Whoa! Was that? Was that the full HP PP recovery? Did I just get the two percent sandwich? I think it could only recover twenty PP or full PP, but if it did both of them, that. <laughs> I'm simultaneously ecstatic that I witnessed a two percent sandwich but also kind of upset that I used it on this scenario and not on a more de desperate one. Okay, that's really cool. New enemy, do you want slumber? K.O. That's not a quirky way of saying okay. He's saying that because he actually KOs you so that you can sleep anytime. It's convenient customer service for an inn. Want me to operate on you, ding? Seems legit. You all fixed up, goody boing. No. Hello, oh, it's your dad! <laughs> You're going to break my vocal cords and, and their ears game. What are you? <laughs> it's a Mr. Saturn in a trash can. <laughs> All right, a lot of you have been sending me when this happens to you, and every playthrough, I see one new scenario of this text box popping up that I've never seen before. It's why I recommend playing with restore points so that you never quit out of the game, because it's every two hours that you've been playing that you see this. But, wow, this is a good one. <laughs> I think I was thinking earlier how funny it would be if this happened when I talked to Dr. Saturn in particular. Uh, all right, good, the ghost went away. I was a little worried that it didn't because of the phone interrupting us and it not despawning yet. Uh, Dr. Saturn, as I activate a skip sandwich, there's just enemies all over the place. Okay, uh, new enemy, the plain crocodile, which is funny because to me it looks like a chocolate crocodile, huh? <laughs> the plain crocodile... Wow, what a great photograph. It will always bring back the fondest of memories. I love Paula's face whenever she faces diagonally in these scenes. Just her expression while Ness is doing the great big awesome smile and this guy is falling out of the sky. <laughs> Paula is truly the straight man in this exchange. Jeff, not so much. Jeff doesn't look quite as awkward. Bomb should definitely go on Paula for all your low PP needs. Calorie stick, Ness takes it. People have told me that this is based on a snack in Japan called the Calorie Mate. I still think it sounds very weird and like an item called the Calorie Stick is something that no one would ever purchase based on concept alone, but hey, Japan's weird. Come on. Normally I'm not this room Rossetti, but this time I have Rossetti. Let's demonstrate it. Dazzling light. Wow! Praying sucks! Sorry to all of you, like, out there who really find hope in it, but 
You know, if you had experiences like mine, I, I think you'd be singing a slightly different tune because, ouch, that affected none of the enemies and made all of us cry. Felt a little strange. How is this gonna go? He shot himself! And Ness! No! Uh, what just happened? What? What just happened? This is why I never use prey. I say, oh, it'll be funny. I'll use prey because I know you guys want to see me use it because it has lots of crazy effects. And I'm not even sure if I've ever seen all the crazy effects, but you just, you do pray once, and the world blows up in your face. And, eh, that's not bad enough. It's not like I blew up the galaxy or anything. And the good effects are like what? Restored 5 HP? They do not outweigh the downsides. Why did they think that was a good ability? I guess Paula's good, so they had to give her something to make her- Would you run away? Hurry up! I know that you're slow. But they're piles of puke! I can't imagine they got very strong feetsies! Rollin' beta, please, would you steamroll those things, making them sticky on the bottom of the steamroller so that they're just getting stretched out all over the road as it drives around? No. Well, this sucks. Get this game, but... Whoever decrees... Maybe we're praying to the Let's Play Gods, actually. I was about to say that the Let's Play Gods decree it, though, but maybe that explains why Prey doesn't work out for me so well, because that's who we're praying to. Oh, good level up, good level up, good level up, good level up. Good, okay, good. Before all else. Hey, everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Earthbound. Last time? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Some things happened. Jeff and Paula bit the dust. All thanks to a certain someone and her crummy little faith in the Let's Play gods and how she thought that that would save the day. Yeah, I can't stay too mad at you. You are my attacker after all, and uh, I feel like I'd be nothing without you. Oh, oh their noses are interlocked like some kind of little machine. I especially can't stay mad at you after that. Okay, Paula, you're forgiven. Just, uh... Maybe only ever pray again if the situation really, really calls for it, please. Uh, this time, we f Jeff couldn't fix anything, now I know. Three for three on mad ducks that I can't fight. He's right there, he's so close, yet so far away. Ah. Uh, just look at his majestic dance. His mating call that produces more of those doofy little faces. It's impossible to be mad when you just gaze into his eyes and see his bill w wiggling back and forth. You just stare into him, and you know that he's actually mad when he looks like that. Which makes him even more endearing. And a little creepy. That too. Well! His... <laughs> It's called the Ranboob. <laughs> we have two new enemies, the Tough Mobile Sprout and <laughs> the Ranboob. <laughs> They're in a row, so I see no reason not to a deal. Ness has been kicking butt lately. He has been amazing. I, I guess, you know, I guess his survivability in the last several areas has been a testament to our great Ness. <laughs> Adding to the confusion of the mushroom enemies, the Strutton. I never learn. I want to know what's going to happen if I do it. I know it's stupid. I know I shouldn't. Rainbow covered light. Uh, what? No! What do you mean you brought back his allies from the dead? Paula, do you hate us? Is this some kind of sick, twisted revenge for me getting you killed and bringing back your dead body to your parents? Do you want the world to declare with its eerie eye? That's what I've been hyping up. That is what is so dangerous about this guy if he's by yourself. The trillion of sprout is the get up we shall. The hard hat can go away. I can pawn it off on somebody else and it's like I never had to spend money on, okay, I'm getting a little bit too into the fact that I'm not having to spend money by being meticulous and looking for secrets, but come on, it's just so satisfying and I love just basking in the achievement. Magnum American, it's not stopping this time. <laughs> Ah, 
How cute. Happen. PP0066 happen. Believe me, this hint is worth a lot more than you paid. That's it for today. And now it's repeating. Joke's on you. I didn't pay anything for it. Oh my god. That's not a song it's playing from the soundtrack. Those are those are sound effects playing in a sequence that happens to make a catchy beat. This is again kind of more of a veterany thing to do if you want to vary up another playthrough from the last one. Nothing. All right. I'm going to give it one more freak. Whoa! That was new, and there was something in the upper left corner. Was that? Wait. There's a piece of a text box in the upper left. It looks like I have an unread email or something. I'm able to advance it. Let's sit here for a little bit advancing and see what happens. Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh, second controller, maybe? No. Oh, wait. Something happened. That was new. Something up and on the right. Like, it moved? Oh, yeah, it's popping up. <laughs> there it is. I am able to press to... Now it's a square and... The corruption has moved outside of the text box and is now bleeding into the game world. I must know where this is going. Uh, what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Alright, mild spoilers. Let's do this game. You want to play? We will play. <laughs> this is a location we have not been to yet. I can't talk to you. Okay, it brought back the little unread mail thing. I'm gonna keep mashing game. I don't care. I don't care. I can be a very patient individual when and only when it has to do with me experiencing new things in a video game that I have never seen before. This is entirely new <laughs> to me. Whoa. What the heck was that? Okay, now I'm locked up again. It's like some kind of pig squealing in the back of this place. I've been here a few minutes, been mashing away, nothing seems to be happening. This looks like it's the end of the line. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in, but I think that's going to be it for now. No, this is far better than anything I could have ever possibly imagined. Equip right. Oh, wait, it's still go- I thought that was- I found the next sanctuary, guys! <laughs> this is my sanctuary right here. The glitch took me here. I walked through the lady, and now I'm at the d WHAT?! <laughs> HOLY FRICK! Um, <laughs> I'm very happy that I stayed, but is it stuck like this, or should I? <laughs> it's also appearing differently in the capture, because the flashing is nowhere near that bright or intense. It's very, very subtle, but I don't know if that's just my TV reacting to bright flashes and trying to make them less intense. 
Holy crap. Okay, I think that topped everything else. This kind of reminds me, um, I've seen people get out of their cars during really bad traffic jams before. There was one time where the traffic was at a complete standstill, and I saw a guy just start... Whatever you're into, Ness. Um, I saw a guy get out of his car, start dancing around on the trunk of the car in front of us, just break dancing to this loud rap music that he had playing. And after he was done and we were just laughing so much, he pointed directly at me and was like, that one was for you. And I'll never forget that guy. I just I think of that every time I see people getting out of their cars and traffic jams. With a sign that says drugs in big, bold, rainbow-colored letters, you think this would be the hot hangout for all the new age retro hippies, but no. Polly used the wet towel. Ness got over the cold. So what have we learned here today? If you ever get a cold, go out into the hot desert, and you will not have to worry about feeling sick anymore, as long as you don't get into any confrontations. And if you need to get over a cold really, really quickly, just throw a wet towel over your face and you'll be good. We have a new enemy starting off. Ness's turn to get blocked out. Paula's mildly embarrassed by him, given her expression, so she's just like, um, yeah, no one needs to see that. <laughs> Well, oh, oh yeah, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come on, come on, no, no, I don't care. I don't care about you. You are not what I am after. I am getting that thing. Desert Wolf, whatever, your drool is kind of freaky, and I don't know why you have that much mouth moisture to go around when you live out in the middle of the desert, but I don't care. I ain't a biologist, so I ain't gonna question it. Any further than I already have. Come on, just smack it one more time, thank you. Desert wolves also have poisonous fangs. That's really the only thing to watch out for on them. That's the only thing remarkable about them. No, come here, come here, come here, you. Yes, back attack. That was a criminal caterpillar, though I would not recommend it. Now, while I'm playing a few rounds and blowing way more money on this little sideshow than I should, I can think of it as maybe paying for their college or something along those lines. And then again, if I stick with this, maybe they won't even have to go to college. Uh, I, there's the ideal solution to their troubles. Would you believe me if I told you that other than Earthbound slash Mother 2 and the prequel and sequel Mother 1 and Mother 3, there is another game in this series developed by the folks who made this game. It is a card and dice game called Slot Brothers. It's a very, very rare game. I would say it is the rarest game in this series. But they got their own spin-off physical card game, and it's, I've heard it's pretty fun. It's only ever been released in Japan. Big surprise with this franchise. And I've never actually played a round of it, though I do have a copy of it, and that's what you're seeing right now. I think it looks really cool. I like how it's very true to the game. You have clear renders of these characters who previously didn't have official artwork. The dice is the symbols that they have on their bodies. It's a bit of an obscure piece of Earthbound trivia that I ugh, got so helpful there when I saw 1-7. That's how the casinos get you. You know, a broken slot machine is still right twice a day. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, no, 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 yeah, 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 no! Come on, 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 You! I have never hated American politics so much in my life, and that's saying a lot! this sign. Planning meeting for Earthbound 2. Only those who are related to this project are allowed to enter. Ape Software Development Team. Oh, if only those folks coming to this meeting could know the 11 years of development hell that awaited their lives. Whew. Because I am not at all bitter, I take this sign as confirmation. It says it right there, Earthbound 2, thing that exists. In the English version of the game, official title. If you want to know, the title Earthbound 2 has never been coined for a sequel to this game. Instead, Mother 3, in its years where it made significant amount of amounts of money for Nintendo when they put it on their financial statements, the English version of their financial statements, which are translated by Nintendo of America to show to their English language speaking investors, or just to members of the press really, reports the game's title as Earthbound 3. Really feeling that love and representation for this series like you guys really love it. <laughs> okay, I know it's probably just financial talk and that, you know, they probably get a lot of things wrong. But still, that is the official English title for Mother 3 aside from this sign. What I want to do is, because I am not bitter at all, 
I want to figure out how many days it has actually been since this confirmation happened. Earthbound was originally released in North America on June 5th, 1995. That was the first possible day that they intended for the public to see this text. That is the day that I will say that the sequel was confirmed for an American release. It has been 23 years since that day. We also need to account for the leap years of 1996, 2000, 2004, 2008, 2012, 2016. So six leap years since then. The speech that I'm giving you right now was released on August 14th, 2018. There are 30 days in June, so we add 25 days for the remainder of the month. We'll at least be fair in assuming that it took even the best players most of the day to reach Foresight, so we're not going to count June 5th itself as a whole day that was waited. There's then 31 days of July, and then the 14 days of August. For our grand total, that means that when you are watching this right now, the absolute minimum number of days it could have possibly taken them to follow up on this confirmation is... 8,471 days since this was confirmed for a North American release. And it has not been followed up on. This puts so much of my life into perspective. And I'm gonna go cry myself to sleep. Have I got a bombshell for you tonight, kids? Ah! Kaboom! The Runaway Five! Yeah! Three, two, one, go! They missed their cue by about ten seconds. Void, uh... Wow! Whoa! Uh... Run! The buffaloes are here! I'm like, uh, what? No! <laughs> it actually followed us in this! I thought for sure that it would, like, not actually follow us that religion. Oh, no, no, no. This is- I, I probably should have run from battle right there. I should not have mashed through that. Uh, okay, good. It was Paula. For once, I'm happy that Paula's the one taking the hit. This turn should be it. Freeze beta. Eat it. You'll have, I don't know, a protagonist that's named... Truffle McRufferstein, but in Japan he's just named, like, Mountain or River or something like that. Or you'll have, like, different levels of magic spells in an RPG where level 1 is Fire, level 2 is Flare, level 3 is Explosion, and then the highest level is, like, Ultra Mega Death Nuke Mick 9000 or something like that. And then you'll see, find out what the Japanese version is, and it's just Fire 1, Fire 2, Fire 3, Fire 4. I've always wondered why Japanese names tend to be more boring. I don't know, maybe it's maybe it's just differences and nuances in language. That's probably what it is. The power of being third, eh? I think I know what that feels like. Whoa! Uh, he was making sure one of us knew what it felt like. Incredibly thankful that that did not blow up in our face. Because, you know, it's a bottle rocket and, you know, it, it, it blows up. I ah, see what I did. <laughs> Two level ups appear from the world in the very near future. Now get ready for one of the greatest speeches ever uttered before a boss fight. Ha ha ha! You fought the strongest master of this hole, the second strongest master of this hole, the fourth strongest master of this hole, and the weakest master of this hole! I'm truly the third strongest master of this hole. Now you see the true advantage of being third. <laughs> Love you guys. So the reason why all these moles believe that they are the third strongest, there is a theory about that, though it has never officially been confirmed. It goes that these moles are all of equal strength. So they all had duels in every possible combination to see which one of them was the strongest before deciding that. And because they are equal in strength, on average, every mole would have won two fights and lost two fights out of the five of them. As a result of that, they all individually believe that winning two fights and losing two fights made them the third strongest master of these mines. I also just love calling them the, the five masters of the mines. That's what I've always called this section of the game. And uh, it, just, it sounds so cool. It's one of the coolest word combinations to describe, like, you know, just, I guess, anything in this game. Well, let me think. Um, always ready to swoop in. Literally. 
I'm happy. We made it through that without losing anybody. We didn't have to use that many items even. You've gotten rid of the monster. Good job. Okay, from here on, just let me dig. You'll see. I'll find the buried gold. Before I start digging, I'm going to set a careful plan of action. I thought the Byron voice was a little bit forced on any of his other texts besides that first one, and I think that voice suits him a lot better. It's how I've imagined him sounding throughout most of my life, and then Byron goes there tainting me. Don't read too far into that word choice, please. It's just kind of how I am. Don't read too far into that either! Ness, greetings! I'm George, Gerardo Montague's brother. Gerardo is in his mine, but he hasn't found any buried treasure yet. We did, however, find a diamond instead. <laughs> Gerardo told me to give it to you. Oh no, I'm full of items, aren't I? Here it is, please take it. Hey, you've got. No! 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 Come back! I will throw a bomb out the window or something! Just come back! No! No! I have good reason for holding on to the ruler and protractor, guys. It's worth all the incon- There, but regardless, I need to go get rid of some items, so I'll be right back. The Escogo Express can take my picnic lunch, my wet towel, and my ruler. I want those items, don't need them for a little while. Making me pay $30 just to see the manager. I see how it is, that's how you keep out the- that's how you weed out all the complaints. Money, that's what I want. Money, that's what is hot. Money, that's what I want. Money, it's what we ain't got except freedom. Freedom, freedom's what we really sought. Money, that's what I want. Money, that's what is hot. Money, that's what I want. Thank you. We got some new enemies with some wacky attackies. The mystical record. I'm never saying that again. Oh! So much for the teddy bear being a good item, jeez! Feeling good about it and then just nothing. Mystical records have a regular attack where they charge forward and then they also have a continuous attack where they hit you for two hits. They're surprisingly mean enemies. I guess with all those smash attacks you could say those were some real smash hits. And that guy, thanks for wearing off my invulnerability, you truly know how to gimp a person. Ness, customer Ness. Quark, quark! Nope, not gonna chance it. Musica, very nice. The only other thing that Musica can do is... Not that. It can play a haunting melody to put you to sleep, which is also very devastating when you only have two party members. If you are hunting for 1 in 128 items, Musica has a 1 in 128 chance of dropping the sudden guts pill. If you want to get it, do not progress any further beyond this point. I just realized this battle background is totally the file loading screen. That's kind of funny. Oh! What? 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 Are you serious? This looks totally staged because I just got done saying that, but oh my god! <laughs> I'll take it! First one I got, I wasn't even trying! <laughs> well, guess I don't need to worry about not progressing further in this story. I am energized and ready to go! I have always wanted to meet the close sign that shouted at me before, because that was a very special thing to have happen to me. Just like getting the sudden guts pill! Because it's special. Let's just don one in celebration of getting one. Ness could use a lot of smash tech. Ness's guts suddenly became 58, amazingly enough. Though not necessarily in that order. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Earthbound. Last time, we visited the most terrifying shady location in the big stinking city. The department store! Plagued by overpriced merchandise that costs not only an arm and a leg, but also your girlfriend. This time! That's the perfect proverb to describe me. Ha! Ha ha! Ha ha ha! <laughs> oh, my jaw is tired. <laughs> that was very well timed. I actually started coughing. I, I lost control of my throat at the exact moment that he started coughing. Oh, man. Um, When I was a kid, I had never seen the name Aloysius written out before. I'd heard of it. I'd just never seen it written. So for years, I was calling him Aloysius Minch. <laughs> Given that, you know, 11-year-olds are so known for having good economic and political advice... 
Pokey hit the big time. How many are left? Five, five minus one is four, so four is left. Ah, it's not funny. Okay, here's another one. Master Pokey's made Electra is made to order. Oh, Bonsai Fire. I hate you. Go back to not having items or anything helpful for us. You don't have anything helpful to say either. Certainly not life advice I'd give any credence to. I'm standing in two parties at once. Which party is the true party? It is up to you to decide in this abstract reality of ours. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Earthbound, and thanks for ruining the illusion, guys. You couldn't have held it up for a few more seconds. The RNG was not in my favor. <laughs> Last time! It makes too much sense what they're saying is what I'm trying to say. That's kind of good. I'll tell you what I hate in this world. That's B. <laughs> wow, buddy, getting a little bit defensive there. The color, the smell, the taste, the texture. Hey, you, you're drool. <laughs> oh, backfiring. Thy name is B. <laughs> Oh, my, oh, I'm sorry. I'm five years old. I have to read it again. <laughs> I have to see it again. I have to see it one more time. I'll tell you what I hate in this world. That's beef. The color, the smell, the taste, the texture. Hey, you. You're drooling. <laughs> uh, every day you get a new favorite Earthbound line, and I think I found mine of the day. Way hey, new guy. We got the Monty Monty statue is just up ahead, but I'm going to stop you right here. Don't even think about getting past me. Because you aren't a guy whose eyebrows are connected and who also has a gold tooth. Alright, time to go bust up my face. <laughs> Made me think of unabashedly again. <laughs> or as I like to call them, bat puns. <laughs> uh, I, I'm unhealthy. I am very mentally unhealthy and very mentally unstable. I fit right in in this place. <laughs> I don't know. Yes means no, and no means yes. Or did you already know this? I already know this. Ah, you knew it. That's good. I was just wondering. Wow, you're actually a pretty boring lady. Um, I don't feel like I was missing out by not talking to you in the past. Well, we're going to go outside of the hospital. It's like, because he had a silhouette, and you can see the game was clearly loading graphics for him. He is actually the same sprite as this guy right here. You thought he was wearing white sunglasses, but no. He just has one gray eyebrow and it's connected. Sprite interpretations. They're so fun to think about. The hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Earthbound. Last time, we emerged victorious over the greatest of all enemies of mankind, a statue. Man, first our thinking is inferior to computers, meaning that we're dumber than silicon, which means that we're dumber than a rock, and then we apparently lose some kind of war against a statue. We are really pathetic beings. Um, but, uh, no, this is not where I need to go. No, 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 okay, you know what? Let's start this again to free up inventory space. I'm going to devour this unborn child. It's good stress relief, okay? Um, effect that we have seen some enemies use on us. I wish Mani Mani just used it on us so I could say that we just saw it, but that's not the case. Hopefully that monkey enjoys having his pet chicken. Having a pet chicken worked out pretty nicely for my little sister. She hasn't complained yet. Which for a young child not complaining about a new pet, that's a lot because usually the parents end up taking care of it. Because that's just kind of how little kids are. I was never one of those though. My mom always said she never saw anybody love their cat as much as they did. Just, I need to, I need to keep thinking happy thoughts to get through this. All right, I need to just keep at it. We're gonna go into the left side here. Because I think beyond one of you two was the guy who wanted the king banana. <laughs> Nesker to level 41, gaining some max HP and PP and nothing else. Though, in order to free up inventory space to shift items around to make this possible, we go back to the horrific place that gave us many traumatic memories. The department store! We don't need the hyperbeam any longer, and that- Man, yeah. Doesn't matter which gender, if you have ever been attracted to another human being, no matter how godlike they may seem, just humanize them a little bit by remembering that at some point in their life, they had explosive diarrhea. Mm. 
Love me some of that sweet jazz drum beat. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Earthbound. Last time, we scaled the Monitoli building, or at least walked through three floors of it. These newfangled kids and their newfangled elevating technology machines. They're no good, I tell you. They don't know the true hard reality of scaling an entire skyscraper like kids in my generation did. We live very dangerous existences. And we made it to the top of the Monotoli building. It sounded kind of cool. No problem here. I agree. There is no problem. <laughs> hey, you're not so good about going through walls anymore, are you? Good thing that's ectoplasmic bars. I don't know if that's actually a ghost term. I assume it would be. Well, no, ectoplas ectoplasmic reticulum is a part of a living cell, so maybe not. I thought there was something more to you than just your smile. It's now time for me to do a death-defying teleport! It's now time for me to do a death-defying teleport! Death-defying... Death defying! Yeah, I'll just go walk out into the streets like some peasant. Sprinkle the bag of dragon out of his head. Yoink, Scoop! Jeff turned into a gigantic fire breathing dragon! It lived? Huh. Door 10. You guys are spoiling the atmosphere. I know, man. I'm wearing sneakers on the beach. I am too serious for this town. I'm sorry. You look so serious. You're in summers. I dream paradise. Relax and have some fun. I'm sorry, man. It's for it's in everyone's best interest that my shoes stay on, okay? Otherwise, we're gonna end up with graphical corruption because the game doesn't know how to handle that. <laughs> just trying to take a nap in the shade. All right. Well, we've gone around the beach for a while. Just kind of the tough guy left a present. Inside the present, there was a chick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whatever designer made that, the item he dropped, they knew what they were doing, and they are a brilliant little game developer for doing it. Oh, I love that detail. Going back to the song as we get into the actual town of Summers, putting your grimy fingerprints all over my car, you little punk. I don't need you when I have video game music, okay? Doesn't matter how horrible you are. You know, what is it with the towns that have the best music? Having the biggest asses living in them. I don't know if they get cocky because they live in such great music all the time that they get loftily high standards and get a stick up their butt. I don't know, but it's a it's a recurring pattern. It happens in a lot of RPGs. There's a big monster living in the sea between here and Scaraba. I've seen a picture of it. The Summers, I mainly wanted to get to show you its description. This pasta dish was a legend. Uh, this, po this is a pasta dish which legend holds was a favorite of King Summers the Third. In the 16th century, back then, there were many great chefs confident of their culinary skills. Oh, too hard. Beef? Please, we do not have such trash on our menu. I'm getting more and more glad by the week that I made that the favorite food. It's good. I'll have braised boa over minced baby leeks. Oh, you're not the waiter. What made you think I was. Do I look like a minimum wage employee to you? Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Earthbound. Last time, we had a very quick suntan from our entrance in Summers, the port resort town of ass faces. Kind of looks like a butt face with it turned on its side and then sunglasses put over one of the cheeks. I'm thinking way too deep into this. What would the hair at the top be? I don't want to think about it. Oh God, no, no, <laughs> stop thinking about that. Uh, This time. Hey. I'm, co I'm collecting players' names for a school project. You know, players just like you. That's right, you, the one holding the controller. Again, brilliant place to put a piracy check. Would you register your name, please? Feel the same way. Meow. Aww. I don't feel scared anymore. Why are cats so comforting? I love the. I almost call it haptic feedback. Like when they're happy, they purr. Hey, haptic feedback. Happy. Good. That works. Works a lot better than I thought it did. It's a pretty interesting glitch. I don't recommend doing it on your first playthrough once again, because it is kind of dangerous and you can make some weird stuff happen. But it's there. Oh, you stop that vehicle. Look at it. It's revving and accelerating. Its tires are rotating, and it can't stop the might of this woman's body. I don't know who told you <laughs> that you're a machine. You came from far off just to eat my magic cake. I thought making cakes would be the best career for me. Dig in. I used all leftover materials. Well, 
Pooh's pretty far along. Uh, we're not gonna save, though. This guy's hairdo is a phone. Yeah. Go quickly. Pooh's master! Pooh's master's name is Yi Su Chi. Pretty cool name. I don't know why they removed it. Prince Pooh. You're my favorite, blush. <laughs> and you thought I was kidding. Chicks dig guys named after excrement. Mm. <laughs> Welcome to Dalam! Personally, I consider this one of the most imaginative locations in this world. It is still considered part of Chomo, even though it is a floating island in the pink clouds. I guess they just don't believe in themselves hard enough as a continent? No, seriously, that is actually a deciding factor in whether or not a landmass is considered a country or a continent. Do most of the residents recognize it as such? See, Greenland, you can be a continent if you just believe hard enough. I'm not kidding, you really can. Problem is, you guys just don't believe in yourselves enough. What is immorality? Play with me. I'm so lonely without you. And you thought I was kidding about him being popular with the ladies. Yeah. Chicks dig guys named after fecal matter. You heard it here first. Water, even though I've never seen him before, I heard the prince can do that. I guess I need more training. By the way, just what is PP pee -pee anyway? Well, you see, whenever you uh, drink too much water, it's just sort of a thing that happens. We don't really talk about it, but it's kind of a natural instinct. Strange as this may sound, there are statues of rabbits blocking your way. Rabbits are jerks, man. But I still love them. I could never say that I don't love rabbits. I think their jerkiness actually kind of adds to their charm. I like them. Holy noodles! That is dark! Prince Pooh, you have now completed your training. The old master must be so pleased. Hurry, now return to the palace. Ah, yes, no arms, no legs, no eyes, no ears. He will be so proud of me. No wonder they call it the place of nothingness. Hi. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Earthbound. Last time, we turned cake into poo. This time, we find ourselves back in Summers with the chosen four meant to- Toilet, mumble mumble. Why would Mr. Spin for Force Museum try to call me? I bet he just wants to brag about something. Well, let him try. I wonder what he wants to tell me. Bah, I dare him to try and upstage me. Oh, uh, pardon me, I was just talking to myself. <laughs> You people who talk to yourselves in video games are awfully suspicious, you know that? I'm just saying. Poo. Um. I know she looks really good right now. Poo, I, I know it might sound like I'm jealous. But trust, you just have to trust me on this, that she is a mutating undead monster who wants to eat your flesh. And not in a kinky way. That's right, looks like we're justifying a stalker's behavior. It's not even remotely the worst thing that we have done to get what we need. Ah, uh, you're a friend of the Runaway Five. I've lived that life. You can buy everything but love, friendship, and experience points. <laughs> you know, unless this is Paper Mario sticker star and, you know, they replace leveling up with more powerful items that you can just buy. I have issues I need to work out, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's kind of clever, actually, that she behaves that way. And if you're wondering, no, he hasn't given up on his dreams to spoon her. I say she should feel lucky that her stalker is not Mr. Fork. What was it we were doing again? All right, making story progress. Ness grows to level 46. And for the first time, Pooh does not get a level up from a fight. Oh man, our shoes are going to be disgusting after this. I've already hated having water so- Oh god, the teddy bear. Oh, I did not think this plan through at all. Ooh. I've already lamented the days of walking to school in the rain and having water soaked into your socks because you stepped in a puddle and having to deal with it at school all day. And then at the end of the day, when you take your shoe off and you peel the sock off of your foot, it's really gross and, ugh, and it just feels wrong. But this takes that to a whole new level. I have not experienced true pain before now. There's a broken, I have no way of knowing if this is what they were going for or not, but a personal theory of mine is that Pooh is named what he is because every school, every school, has that one foreign kid who has a perfectly normal name in their language, 
and then as soon as they transfer into your culture and everyone learns what their name is, it's something hilarious in that country's most commonly spoken language. I, I suppose it wouldn't even necessarily be for English, though, but just any cultural change that would happen during a kid's childhood, because Pooh is a big deal in his country. Everyone loves him, but the second that he's suddenly in American culture, he would get made fun of and have the worst childhood ever. <laughs> Like everyone, I knew one of these growing up, and I've always wanted a good excuse to share this story because everyone I've told it to has really, really liked it. <laughs> I never actually met him, but in my elementary school, on the school computers, there was a drop-down list where you would select your name and then log in. Oh, Pooh grew to level 27 to interrupt my story. You're not getting in my good graces there, buddy. <laughs> anyway, no, I'll, I'll stop crapping on him, like I said. Anyway, um, on this drop-down list, I swear to you that this name... I got in trouble, almost, for mentioning this kid around the teachers because they didn't believe me. They thought I was trying to get around, you know, not being allowed to, like, say certain things at school. And I actually had to pull it up on the computer to show, no, this is a real kid that goes to the school. I never met him. But somewhere in the confines of my school was a kid with the first name... Fuckoy. I'm not kidding! I am not kidding! This kid must have had the most miserable upbringing of all time. And I always asked other kids if they knew him because I always wanted to meet him. And like just kind of find out what he was like with a name like that. And I never found him. I didn't know anybody that knew him. Maybe he was like a really little kid who was a lot younger than me because I think I learned of his existence in the third or the fourth grade. I'm aware that it might have been pronounced a little differently, but when I showed it to the teacher and showed her the spelling, she was just like, oh, about the whole thing and didn't get me in trouble after that. That was verbatim what his first name is. I swear I am not swearing to you. <laughs> I did swear that wasn't on purpose either. <laughs> Come on, are you setting your kid up to just have the most miserable time at school ever? Says the guy who always gets called Emily all the time, so I guess I'm not really that much better, but still, it's a story I've always wanted to share. Being a bit unusual, seven damage to Paula, and three damage right back at you, because, yeah, I gotta slap you in the face. Because yeah! One PP left! Yeah! Awesome! Love doing that! I know I could have killed him in less time, but nothing beats the thrill of an instant kill hunt, you know? Nothing beats the thrill of a headshot. Speed up by one, guts up by one, vitality up by one. I'm feeling the vitality up. Rat rocks! Oh, my offense up Omega! Raises the offense of the entire party, making her even better than she was before. Who grows to level 30? There we go. On the way back, Ness got a very, very solid level up. Paula got a level up. Who got a level up, and no one likes you, Jeff. Well, now that we have that very location, but it's mine now. Take it from me, if you dare. What the heck happened to you guys? It's thunder and storm! <laughs> there is a very awkward and possibly kinky story behind these two guys. They are one entity in the same, which begs the question, which is the dominant one that was just speaking to us? There's a lot of logistical questions I have, including, and but not limited to, what the heck is Storm holding? I've always wondered that. Thunder's at least holding a lightning bolt, and that makes sense, but why would a cloud be holding a leaf? Maybe it's representory of all the plants that he blows away, and he decided to keep one as a pet? I'm, yeah, just kind of frazzled and all over the place. Thunder and Storm, we certainly take a, took a big, uh, big enough blight out of their HP. There's that freeze beta. Oh man, I'm just slipping all over my tongue. Look at this! It doesn't even have a wall. I mean... In the real world, this would be a steal for $7,500? And in a world where burgers cost 15 bucks? It's especially a steal for $7,500? I think we got a screaming deal. I think we really got what we deserved. You cannot get your money back from this. Yeah, because the rope is actually... Do I want to know what that rope is coming out of? No, I probably do not. Scaraba! They don't got drinking laws over here in the Middle East. You can buy all the alcohol you want. They'll just look the other way and call it a protein shake. And... Bananas. I don't know if the Middle East is known for its bananas. I somehow doubt it. May you never find rocks in your sandals. Oh, rocks and shoes are terrible. Of the worst items for the money that there is. 
The snake does a little bit of damage and has a chance of poisoning the enemy. When I say a little bit of damage, I'm talking like three damage. The viper is the same thing, but thankfully has a guaranteed chance of poisoning the enemy. Compared to the big bottle rockets, which cost less than this, why would you ever need it? Even compared to the bombs, they are vastly inferior. Oh no, you disappoint me. You disappoint me too, buddy. Should I keep a snake at home? Perhaps I should ASP an expert. <laughs> Snakes are so unpleasant, but so cute. Oh, I don't know what, what I may be saying. Where are you? Is it in here, perhaps? No. No, I don't want any mummy bandages. No soliciting allowed, please. This sprite reminds me of a recurring dream that I used to have as a kid. I had a dream that I ended up in a Middle Eastern country and I wound up marrying a woman who had a veil on all the time. And she would never show me what she looked like. I could never get her to take the veil off. At the end of the dream, I was able to remove the veil and I found out that I married a tree. Yes, we even had children. Institutions wherever possible. I gotta say, that shadow left by that tree is kinda nice looking. I never noticed it though, but it looks kinda funny. I guess maybe the sun's like right overhead, so the shadow looks kinda tiny. And the shadow's not even the same on all the trees, meaning that the angle of the sun is- <laughs> Wow, I sound like I'm overanalyzing a piece of fiction or something, being like, You know, the- the sun is in this location in the shot above these two ponies. That clearly meant that Lauren Faust had a really creative intention saying that this is a serious issue that we really need to be working on. Okay, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't like crazy theories as much as the next guy. Anyway, the Great Crested Buka. Next up is the Fierce Shattered Man. These are creepy enemies, man. Like, I know that I commented on the name, uh, well, actually, I don't think I commented on the name, though, but the creepiest thing I find about the Shattered Man is actually the name, and it's just, you know, Shattered Man when you think about it. <laughs> Sounds very dramatic. Doesn't gain as much speed, so he doesn't have to feel left behind anymore. Works in more ways than one because we're talking about speed. Healing Alpha, get you over the cold, and then another one of you. Okay, I, I need to stop here for a moment and tell you that <laughs> Ever since a few minutes ago when I was describing what I like doing on the stairs out loud, I had a thought, and I really want to do it now. I'm such a dork! I'm sorry! I just... I can't help it, okay? <laughs> I really... I've never done that. Like, I've never given it that caption before, but it was really tempting and I couldn't resist. Uh, cool, an item. You don't want to. Stay with me for a while. Do you understand? It is important that I study and learn the Star Storm. It will be most helpful to us. Once I learn it, I'll meet up with you, Ness. Trust me, I will see you again. It depends on Pooh's efforts to determine the reuniting of the group. Be faithful, and wait until that time comes. You should leave the heroes destined to save the world for dead in the middle of the desert so you can go live with me so I can teach you the way of the stars! Seems legit. We made it through the pyramid. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Earthbound. Last time, we came out of the pyramid. Didn't say emerged. And... We got the Hawkeye, the very thing that we were supposed to get from the pyramid that Gygus didn't want us getting! And then a creepy old man swooped by in a tornado, took Pooh away, and the Hawkeye with him. Oops. This time... 1,829 damage! Why am I allowed to normally purchase this? That thing is a weapon of mass destruction! I'm pretty sure that the explosion knocked him into last week! I spent more nights in this man's tower than I would like to admit, but I could not get Jeff to restore the other item. Uh Hello, it's your dad! <laughs> Ness, I am your father. You've been out there a long time now, maybe none of my business. Uh. I guess those were some cool beats. Hey, 
there's the cup of coffee. It's okay. This guy's done doing evil for the rest of his days. I'll just leave him on the floor. So that he can cool off and then rot and think about what he did into eternity as he gets overrun by leeches and maggots. I don't know if that actually happens to coffee, but probably does. Kind of sitting there taunting you. You're standing right around my belly button. I knew your belly button led to an alternate dimension. I'm pretty sure some kid thought that they were forbidden from opening their belly button again because it did that. It's just such a... <laughs> okay, that one's kind of funny. It just, I don't know, when you're a kid, it's so fascinating that your belly button is closed up and you can't open it and, you know, you gotta wonder what's on the other side. I'm not giving you an invitation to do that if you've ever wondered that if you're a kid too, though, but when I was a kid, I wondered about it a lot, wondering why I couldn't open it and I'd pick at it and my parents would tell me to stop and it didn't really stop me, but, you know, they tried. Pizza inside, okay, what can I throw away? Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Earthbound. Last time, we found Dungeon Man in the middle of the desert. We entered his body, climbed him up, the first mix of man in dungeon in history, and he told us to leave. That all could have been a lot faster and a lot more entertaining had he just, you know, been able to be talked to from the beginning, but I guess he's a little bit too tall for our tiny little prepubescent voices to reach him. If only we had a deeper voice. We would travel a lot further. I know the frustration. My voice only seems to get higher pitched with age. Anyway, I've got a place to heal. You know, we're not just spending nights on these benches. We're spending Scarabian nights. <sighs> I want Jeff to repair the broken bazooka. And what I wanted to show you. Broken down old submarine. The yellow color is purely coincidental. Yeah, it's a pretty good Beatles reference. There's a lot of Beatles references, a lot of pop culture, a lot of Beatles especially though. And it's cool. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Earthbound. Last time, things got serious. We reached deep darkness, a place as serious as seriousness can be. Yeah, we're gonna brighten it up with our own little brand of sunshine, of course. This time, it's completely broken. I thought I could fix it, but on re-examination, I noticed there's no engine. Hmm. I mean, he was a bad kid, I won't deny that, but I don't think he deserved being in a helicopter crash and getting looted out here. This kind of evokes feelings of something very dark that happened to me when I was young. It was that I had a bully who was not always a bully. He was in a mutual group of friends that I was in. And I didn't really not get along with him. He was just kind of there in the early years. But over time, I guess he just decided he really didn't like me. Every day. Called me names. Was really nasty to me. I never saw one ounce of remorse for him. I never saw one ounce of remorse from him, and I remember that I just absolutely hated this kid. And I guess one of the things that taught me to, you know, just kind of, you know, try to be nice to people, even if they aren't nice to you, was that he ended up actually passing away in the ninth grade, and I remember just being kind of sad that I never really made nice with the guy, I never really had a chance to be good to him. I treated him badly right back, and I remember that that was one of the things that I think shaped me as a person, where I still occasionally feel bad about it to this day. I know that it does not excuse like him bullying me for years, but it's still one of those things that I do wish I acted differently in. I don't mean to dwell on it. It is something that happened a long time ago, and I can't really lie and say the guy was a friend, but... I remember that I did replay Earthbound around that time, and I did get that feeling when I got to that helicopter again where I kind of just remembered him. And it kind of reminded me just how much I had changed since those days and how much I wished I could show him that I had. In a way, Pokey sort of reminds me of him, and that's mainly what I was trying to say. Long enemy, and we don't have any way of dealing with him. In Japan, he is called the Return of Belch. So I think maybe it was one of those lost in translation kind of things. We're solidifying his body quite a bit. Thought about some beef and started What is it with Ness getting homesick whenever he's near Master Barf? Maybe... I don't know. I'm sure somebody's gotten a hello, it's your dad talking to Master Belch. Maybe it's the one in the world that's correct. Pooh swooped down from the sky! Pooh's does he use his new power? PSI Starstorm! 
Hey everybody, it's Chucka Conroy. Welcome back to more Earthbound. Last time, we explored all of Deep Darkness and made our way to the very edge of it after defeating the return of Master Belge, who was having a bit of an identity crisis. And I guess Pooh was there too. He finally reunited with the party of it, but there is yet another pointless mole playing rough here. And hey, look, another one. You want some more? You want some more? Let me take this bat and shove it up your... He was facing away from us, after all. That's Magic Truffle number two. <laughs> number two. A little bit of help, the Mina Bird that gives you this hint is right next to it. As for the other new item that we obtained that I was wanting to show off is the Casey Bat. Ness can equip this weapon. You can't help but swing this bat with all your might. There's a good chance you may just whiff. It is a reference to the poem, Casey at the Bat. As a reference to that, it has insane power, I believe being Ness's most powerful weapon, raising his attack by 71 points over what it currently is. Unfortunately, your attacks will only connect 25% of the time, assuming the enemy doesn't dodge. Why would you ever want this? Well, if you're hunting for 1 or 128 items, uh, or you just want to kill enemies before getting into a battle, when the game is rolling to see if you deserve the insta-win because you'll kill the enemy in one turn no matter what, it does not check to see if your attacks hit or not. It always assumes that they do. As a result, it is worth your time to equip this whenever you are doing any kind of item hunting or going back to an earlier area so that you can insta-kill enemies a lot more. As a kid, I had never heard of Casey at the Bat. Never heard of it until people told me it was a reference and it was referenced in Earthbound and I looked it up. When I equipped the Casey Bat, I spent the entire rest of the game missing almost every attack thinking I was just getting insanely unlucky or just not noticing it for a while because I remember it was a bit after this after I realized that I'm missing every turn. And I never equipped another bat because it was not as strong as the KC bat on the equipment screen, so why would I? This item caused me a lot of grief. Even though I agree that it is a good name for it, it did not get it across to me at all that that was what it was for. And if you're wondering why I didn't read the item description, I was a kid. I didn't play video games to read. Even though this game is known for its witty dialogue. Weird junk. <laughs> we have a mailbox, a tin can, a discarded television with a VCR, a trash can containing a death ray. <laughs> it's always the shy ones. I tell you, it's always the shy ones. Are you homesick? Well, I knew there'd be days like this. It must make it makes you feel better. Must make you feel better listening to your mom's sweet voice. Um, I like how that guy says I'm not as strong as I look, even though he has one pixel thick stick arms. This is a nice song, and that's kind of why I stayed quiet to let you listen to it for a little while, but there's a bit of trivia regarding Tenda Village that I don't know how to say this in a way that's not offensive, so I'm just going to say it as objectively as I can. Please don't take this out of context. <laughs> the Tenda did not always look like this. In Japan, this game got a delay right at the very end of its development. It was actually delayed several times, but at the very end of development, it got a two-month delay. Within the stretch of time, one of the few things that was changed was the appearance of Tendas completely. They had black skin and had monkey tails. That was localization censorship waiting to happen, and I think they knew it, so we ended up with the cute little non-controversial green guys that you know now. And personally, I think it was a positive change. They're really cute, whereas before, they just kind of had like big wide eyes and looked kind of creepy. We don't have a lot of footage or images of what they look like, so what you've seen is all I was able to find, but yeah, that's what they were going to be. Tenda are also stated in official text to be a race of human? Which, to that I say, come on, Nintendo, even you don't know what you're talking about your own property sometimes. I don't see it, but if that's true, that makes their original design even worse. But I guess I'll brighten the mood in saying that, you know, the Tendas are shy. I guess that makes them chicken Tendas. <laughs> oh, that's another one of those puns that I've been waiting the better part of ten years to share with you, because... 
didn't have the courage to go out and roar my puns into the world like I do now back then. Oh, I feel so good. I'm going to apologize to Jeff in advance for this. That's why. Fight with these guys to show you what they were capable of? Probably not about to happen. In fact, let's try it. Let's get into a fight with two at once. Oh! <laughs> he looks like he has a wing on his back. He looks like some kind of vampiric flying crocodile and he's not actually standing on his tail. It's just him lifting off to take flight. <laughs> Jeff grows to 52. The last thing I want to say about this place is that hit detection sucks. Paula grows to 54. Stonehenge, have you changed your tune in any way? No, you're just still concerned about the youth of today being stupid and not at all like what you were like when you were a kid. It's all a conspiracy, I tell you. The aliens are taking over the world by making sure idiots like this are the only people who get to vote by not abducting that type of person. Well, that escalated quickly. I've been waiting for you. My master apple had completed this eraser eraser machine. While he was calling you, he was kidnapped. He felt like this. Yeah. I was there, but I was helpless. Sorry about that. Anyway, take this machine. Also, sorry, Kirby. For making that sound, I woke up my cat who, for some reason, always thinks that where I'm recording is a great place to sleep and that he will never ever get woken up. He just went back to bed without moving. Case in point. Ooh, got the multi-bottle rocket in usefulness. So we're gonna go outside and we got three minute delivery. So now I can tell you about the irony that mock pizza takes three minutes to deliver but the escargot express are snails and they get here almost instantly. Hardy har. That's why I like having Pooh copy it because on a coin flip every turn he will max out the HP of one of your party. Personally, I think it sounds very disturbing, the idea of him just sprouting a tentacle out of his back, impaling somebody, and then shooting oil through their body to heal them. Especially on Paula, that sounds really creepy, just having him do that and having, like, oil gushing out of her eye sockets and everything. Okay, I'll stop. I'm sure this is, like, really disturbing somebody. Shin that I ordered the large pizza for. Ness and his friends ate the large pizza together. Such a good feeling. No wonder everyone's... Screw you, Pooh! I'm trying to be all heartwarming about it, but you're just like, uh, my culture did not raise me eating this most unorthodox food. Paula got Thunder Gamma through a level up. I'm never gonna get to say this. I was going to say that if this whole save the world thing doesn't work out, then we could become a traveling museum exhibit. Behold, the only boy in the world who doesn't like pizza be a rare enough sight that you could do that. Then again, I guess if this whole saving the world thing doesn't work out, we'd be dead. So, um, downsides of being heroes to save the world. We have made it to a new section of brings back memories. This was the soundtrack that was the backdrop for us finding out that we were going to be fighting aliens one day. And now it is the backdrop to us actually fighting those aliens today. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroll. I promise this thing is actually dangerous and is actually memorable for good reason. But instead it was like, no, I don't want to be memorable. I want to live a quiet life in the countryside after I'm done blowing up the earth. I'm sure it has plenty of other planets that it could live on considering how these guys have intergalactic travel down or something. All right, well, uh, we might find out why it's so memorable here in a moment. It's... Fires a beam, wraps its tentacle around you to immobilize you, which we already immobilized it anyway, so it sure as heck ain't gotten to do that in Ultimate Twist of Irony. And it steals an item. I guess having an item stolen from you like a brain food lunch would be probably the worst thing that it could do to you. The sort of kings you hadn't equipped yet, you think of that? <laughs> the chances of it actually stealing the item that you care about are- Oh no! Can't breathe! Can't- last much longer. Can't last much longer. Do you both say the same thing? Looks like you do. 
Oh, next blue, next room. I knew that there was one that was kind of touchy. If you wanted to talk to the Tessie Watcher or Andernuts, their text is just simply no problem here. They don't have any sort of text to tell you if you could get up there. They kidnapped the hippie. It's personal. Or at least it will be personal in a later time, because we're going back! If we go onward, we lose our ability to fight these enemies, so, uh... Humans can hold their breath for at least a couple hours, right? Yeah, it should be fine. Ooh! Get back attacked. Okay, good. You start the battle, have Jeff use his spy command on the enemy. This will tell you if they have an item drop that they are capable of... It tells you if they have an item they're capable of dropping. I kind of would recommend having an inventory space free in Jeff's slots, just because I don't know if that impacts your ability to- WHAT?! I guess it does! I had to grind one enemy! You know the method? I didn't have to stay here and grind at all, but I have significantly less vocal cords than I did a moment ago. Wait a minute, did that... Was that text printing incorrectly? I have to know. Ness, you give that to Pooh. Again. Yeah, it has a line break that it's not supposed to have. Limitations of... Um, I'm guessing it's that Ness and Poohs and the Sword of Kings have the just the right length to make it do that with the text being generated on the fly it's a weakness we were not beep prepared for that eventuality the prophecy from the click apple of enlightenment may be true but you must not whirr underestimate us the starman got ported to the nintendo switch because it's the starman deluxe this is as you would guess a very powerful version of the starman <laughs> yeah uh okay solidified not bad just in case we don't get a chance to see it the reason why I recommended so strongly that you um the reason why I recommend it so strongly that you put up a shield is that he actually knows Starstorm Alpha he's the first enemy that we're fighting that has the cape ah! Ah! wait his body solidified after he was already dead um does he have that disease that, like, petrifies you when you die, or... Uh... That was strange. Okay. I like how the boss of the Stonehenge base died to being slapped with a bandage. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> Hold. Next time on Earthbound! Oh! Cut right through that bear like a hot knife through butter! We're gonna go find the Overcoming Shyness book. See you guys then. Do butterflies come out in the winter? I don't really know the answer. I've grown up in places that don't even have snow, so for me it's always been true, but I don't know if that's true anywhere else. What do I know? It's always like 95 degrees in the winter anywhere I've ever lived. Hey everybody, it's Chugger Conroy! But not this one. This Mr. Saturn, I come buying and he can do all for me. He will sell you the Horn of Life for $1,780. Might as well stock up. We have $160,000. <laughs> After our little shopping trip, I gotta say, Paula and Pooh are feeling awfully horny. I like the Horn of Life. Go ahead and give me the Horn of Life. Go ahead and give him the Horn of Life. And he will trade you the items in order that they appear on the list. So we start off with a plain roll. You happy? I happy. That's debatable. And this is a very um, cumbersome way of getting things. <laughs> At least you lampshaded it yourself. I'm going to blow your mind by telling you that the summers of one at two son, three and four side is... Ten the village. <laughs> uh, I thought of that when I was like fourteen, and I thought I was so smart and ahead of the curve. I didn't have friends, okay? Hello, experience. Yep, level sixty-six, level fifty-six. Vitality up by two. Whoa! Look at you, poo! Ow! You 
you're smelling bad. Which is why we're looking at you. I was doing a thing, but it just sounds awkward when I point it out. I deserve that. Oh, right, uh, Conducting Spirit, I had something to say about you. All right, their pelvises look like Super Nintendo controllers. It's kind of funny and hard to unsee, and like, I remember thinking that when I was a kid, and ever since then, whenever I see them, I just think that all the time. Doesn't matter where my mind is, my mind's always just like, oh yeah, there's the guy that had the Super Nintendo controllers for a pair of hips. It looks almost exaggeratedly so like it, where you have the two crosses there, and it's just the right shape and everything. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroll. Welcome back to more Earthbound. Last time, the ground is shaking. Okay, I couldn't resist. Welcome back to more Earthbound. La what? Musical montage got short. Holy crap! I was planning on recording for like the next hour, but I sure as crap ain't gonna be doing that now. My vocal cords will not allow it or exist. ARE YOU KIDDING ME?! I even thought to myself, like, what if that happened again- <laughs> Alright, well, now it's time to learn the answer to a question I have never known the answer to. How much does this thing sell for? Because I don't need it! <laughs> oh my god, uh... I just want to say that I almost didn't record today, and I only just barely chose to do it after doing a workout and feeling a little bit more energized, and I have never been so happy on any day of my life that I chose to go for- TWICE IN A ROW I GOT THAT CHANCE! Come on three times while we're at it, why don't we? Wait, what? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no! Oh no, 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 no. Okay, um. I'm making a restore point right. Oh, crap, no. Did I save with dad? No, that was before I. Teleporting in and running into an enemy can cause some really bad glitches to happen. I've mentioned this before, and I don't know what's. Go don't do this to me, game. Don't do this to me. Don't crash when I get out of this battle or something stupid. Please. No corrupted graphics. Nothing. Just be okay. In case this really is the end, we're doing the multi-battle rocket on this guy because it's what I've been wanting. Come on. 2,587 damage. If we didn't crash the game, then we crashed it. Please let that be okay. Please let it be okay. Oh my god. I've never been so relieved in my entire life. I have never been so relieved. I almost got back my right to complain and moan about never getting shiny Pokemon there for a second, and I didn't know how I felt about that. Every item that we have access to? Yeah! Oh. Premature celebration. I thought... I killed the enemy and saved Boo. Well, that's okay, Poo. You get to do the most important job in the entire party. Even more so than keeping Paul alive, and that's emptying inventory space because it's always too full. Thanks, buddy. Your death was not in vain. Your death was very valuable to me. That sounds horrible, but that's okay because you sure went out there and... Uh, died a convenient death. I'll just, I'll just stop. Thankfully, <laughs> smash one damage. One damage from a smash. That is hilarious. I was about to tell you that this is probably the least bad place to get possessed because 
you're going to end up having enemies use fire on you practically every turn, and because that targets everything on your side of the field, then it's going to end up taking a lot of damage. But wow, <laughs> that's hilarious. Pooh, launch out a star storm. You finally got here. This is the eighth your sanctuary location, but it's mine now. Take it from me, if you dare. Rawr, it's the carbon dog! I didn't mean to sound like a pirate there, but I guess the carbon dog sounds kind of like it! Okay, I'll stop taking the seriousness out of the moment! And the wind out of the sails! Sorry, I just had to get one last pirate analogy in there! Beep, beep. Bit you hard! Diamond dog was diamondized! You won! That took me way longer than just fighting him normally, but yep, you can beat him without actually beating him. He insta-kills himself. It's a bit weird to set up. It's very rare, but I find it so amusing that his sprite doesn't even go away, and it just says you won with him still standing there right in front of you. And yet, I don't know, he's made of double diamond now? I don't really get how that works, but I, I'll take it. That's what I wanted to show you. It's one of the funniest ways of killing a boss. If you ever want to vary up your next playthrough a little bit, and all the other thousands of ways I've told you to vary up your next playthrough a little bit haven't been enough for you, there's a challenge, and one that will not take you hours of grinding. 24 HP! Ooh. You say that together as one word, it's... Hello, it's your dad, waiting for you at the end of the longest dungeon. At the end of your journey! No. Fate of the world's at stake. You understand. Okay. Now, as a kid, when I heard this place called by name before I visited it, it, I didn't really connect the dots that it was going to be a spring flowing with fire. I thought it was going to be a spring bouncing up and down while also happening to be on fire. That made more sense to my childhood mind trivia about this grand adventure. In, say it with me, in Japan, Ness ain't in his PJs. He's nude. And you get to see that hiney that is protected by that earth pendant. Thankfully, you don't see him trying to wear it between the cheeks. This does not mean that Ness is naked at the beginning of the adventure like I thought was the case when I first saw this when I first saw this piece of trivia when I was like 11 years old and thought, oh my god, that has to be so funny. No, he's in his pajamas at the beginning, he just looks different and magic. The dream you'll have here is a dream within a dream. Your heart knows things you aren't aware of. You want to sleep. I've never had a dream inside of a dream before, but I've had dreams that seemed very realistic that started with me waking up in the morning so I thought that I was actually getting ready for school and then I'd go oh we went outside to see that it was snowing that's kind of neat I'd go outside and then I would suddenly wake up back in my bed again one second later and I'd be like wait what's going on and it took me a few minutes to get my bearings straight and yeah it was really out there hey so this girl is one of the rare examples I believe the only other instance is Dr. Saturn of a character who is not named in the Japanese version, but is a named character in the English version. Dr. Saturn's understandable because he plays some sort of role and provides a service to you that's easy to remember, but fans of this game were wondering what the heck was up with this girl for years. Why this random little nobody NPC would be a named character outside of Japan when there's no mention of that anywhere else. Well, the story behind it is that the localization director of Earthbound, Marcus Lindblom, uh, had a very tight schedule when working on this game. To make it all that it was, and seriously, good job. Your dedicated work really shows. He came into work to work on this thing every single day for the full nine months that he had to complete it. Except one. The day that his wife gave birth to his daughter. As thanks for all he had done to make this game what it was, the team made the decision to put his newborn daughter's name in the game as a symbol of his dedication. That's a story Japanese gamers don't really get to enjoy, and I think that when you know that, it's yet another example of a rare case of a localization sometimes being superior to the original work. 
If you're curious what Nico herself thinks about this, she actually has played Earthbound and written a blog post about her experience, which I've linked in the description. It's crazy how I think every NPC sprite has had at least some story or intrigue associated with it. There was, let's see, the carrot key doing weird things. Um, there was, well, I guess you were kind of the one of the lesser ones, the polar star thing. There was you giving us the Mr. Baseball cap. There was the I know you, I really like you, you know what I mean line kind of standing out. Of course, we gotta love Picky. Like, every character, everyone does something. And I love that so much. Even just the most minor NPCs, you got stories about them. And even she does. She has one of the best ones. Maybe even the best one. He had fun one snow day. I decided that I was going to try my hardest to beat Earthbound in one sitting. Starting after school, Got to work right away, and I ended up playing through it through the entire night. The sun had already come up when I reached the Sea of Eden, and I heard this song, and it was really sinking in just how beautiful it was in that moment, yet it was making it really hard to stay awake because it was also super relaxing, and I was like, come on, come on, can we get through this place as fast as we can, please? I don't want to fall asleep. I'm dozing here. Come on. Play more intense music. I don't know. Have the final boss play an electric guitar at me or something. Just anything, please. And yeah, it was not the moment when you want to realize that a piece of music is very moving and soothing, but it was when I realized it. It certainly stuck with me over the years. Uh, you just barely can catch up with me. I like to challenge myself and see if I can get a flying man all the way through within the five attempts. It doesn't always happen, but we've got this far and I don't think he's taken any damage. We're right back over by that present that had the magic tart in it. And there's the end of the pathway. If I'm going to tell you stories about Magicant and the Sea of Eden, I can't tell you about my personal experiences without... Uh, about with this part, without telling you a little bit about myself. So, I I've mentioned this in the past a few times. But, without going into too much detail and talking about myself for too long, I am on the spectrum. I do have a mind that works a little bit differently from other people. I'd rather not go into too much detail, but from what I understand, I was a slim chance. Ended up being able to control most of their symptoms, and yeah, my mind does work a little bit differently. Now, I've said in the past that I was misdiagnosed, and that was something that I regret saying. It was a fit of rage because a dis because a, uh, a relative convinced me that I was, but honestly, I don't believe that, and there is no such data to support that that is the case. But one of the ways that my mind works differently from other people's is that rather than remembering, I guess, text definitions for what things are, I tend to remember pictures, where I oftentimes know what a word looks like a lot more so than... I would remember, you know, text associated with it. For whatever reason, I don't know why, but the way that I've always remembered a certain word is this image right here. This growth in the middle of the Sea of Eden that you see at no other point, I don't even know what I would describe it as, maybe a vine, maybe a tentacle, but this image of this thing growing out of the middle of a mind with this water around it sparkling and this music playing is creativity. And I don't think there is any other concept outside of something in Earthbound that I remember with something in Earthbound. However, we have bigger fish to fry than talk about that. The Kraken has made a comeback for us to talk about it. Every copy of Earthbound released in North America came with a copy of the- No! Came with a copy of the No. <laughs> I guess that would be right up my alley. Smartest scientist in the world who is smarter than Einstein or Heisenberg was not able to complete the phase disorder, a device for connecting two points in space and time, that would be his greatest invention, and yet, after meeting the Mr. Saturns, he was suddenly able to do that? Mr. Saturn! Not over the top! <laughs> Sorry, I've been waiting to say that one. And I guess while we're here, yeah, we are going off to 
on its crotch, which is smellier than being diamondized by any other enemy out there. They will use Brain Shock Omega, which is unlikely to affect you except for. Uh, 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 no! 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 Not likely to affect you, my ass! Come on! Excellent, excellent. Everything proceeded as planned. Dr. Ananuts, Mr. Saturn, and I worked together and finally completed the phase disorder. The purpose of this device is to enable instantaneous travel through space and time. In this prototype, you can only travel to different points within the same time period. It is able, however, to search out the locations of enemies. Right now, it is indicating the presence of enemies in the Lost Underworld. As a kid, I took that as, oh, I have to go to the Lost Underworld and look for Gygus, and I ran around that place for hours because it's so slow, and I was sure that maybe I missed something because I didn't explore it that thoroughly the first time and didn't know my way around it. But no, you're actually just supposed to get in, you know, like he said earlier in the same sentence that I apparently didn't read. Sure. Our almost octopus looks like octopus, very octopus, and this guy is known as Actual Octopus. Ooh, it's serious. <laughs> At least keep one of us alive. At least it's not going to attack for a few more. Okay, good. Wow. Uh, no. No. Uh, <laughs> don't do this to me. I thought I really dropped the goddess ribbon, and I freaked out. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Uh. Multi-bottle rocket, I guess it- Material for stories that you're gonna want to tell people. All sorts of strange things surrounding you and everything feeling larger than life, it feels like childhood. And that's because it also remembers the bad things. We have four heroes who come from very non-conventional families. Ness has a working father who is always absent and he never gets to spend time with him being raised by just his mother. And, you know, maybe a little more than he realizes, also his little sister. Paula has parents who run a business out of their home, and her life is definitely different from most kids because of that. Jeff has an unhealthy relationship with his father, goes to boarding school, and his mom is never mentioned at all. And then Pooh is royalty, having expectations placed on him and being very different from all the others. And it's not even just our four heroes. Beyond them, we've seen very violent concepts, themes of child abuse and neglect. It isn't just the zany fuzzy pickles. It understands having a sense of humor in the face of the bad things that happen to you. It understands when you're uncertain. It understands when you're scared. Since way, way back, you and I have been very tight. Pals, basically. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Ness. I saw a picture in the international newspaper of someone who looks like you. But there's no way it was you. Maybe you'd like to study my city management techniques so that you could become a mayor someday? <laughs> since I re since I returned peace to the town of Onet, I was re-elected mayor. Are you here to celebrate? All caps, no! Don't be shy, a child shouldn't be so self-conscious. I think that's the only time that there's all caps yes and no. It's a leftover from an earlier version of the script, presumably, and it's, I like that. Are you here to celebrate? Yes! Thanks a lot. From this day forward until the day I die, I will dedicate my life to the peace in Onet. <laughs> you elected him, folks. Aha, uh -huh. it's funny, because you can stay in this hotel for free, the very first time. Aha. Uh -huh. Our news headline is... Monsters disappear! Animals calm down! The town is at peace! Good luck, okay? This man is going to become an entomology exhibit. He's one of the few remaining remnants of their ever physically being monsters in this world. He carries their malicious DNA inside of that toadstool upon his noggin. Him never walking again will be remembered for generations as a noble sacrifice for the betterment of... Remembering the culture of evil? 
Hey, stubby legs. Do you wanna... Hey, it's the boy who wears the same outfit all the time. You seem happy enough, but who knows? I'll have you know that I have walked through swamps and big city sewers and, oh yeah, gotten some real living vomit on these shoes. Been through a lot with them. My odor carries too many memories for me to change clothes. I'm not a loser. This is where it doesn't play. Is that Ness? You're always so cheerful. Thanks for the help the other day. Ooh, Earthbound confirmed to have all taken place in one day. You heard it here first. When the conspiracy theorists are telling you, you will know that I was out of the game. You just didn't want to listen. Or maybe you did. In which case, thank you. Thanks ahead of time. Thanks ahead of time. Thanks ahead of time. Thanks ahead of time, man. Don't you think the mental health of everyone in the village has improved? You sound a lot more like mindless zombies repeating the same words over and over again than you did before, which is kind of an achievement. Hi, you. Run my promise that we will do more of the three tent glitch. Creating road rage. Damage, it will never happen. Status ailments are gone from the overworld as well. I guess, you know, when we beat Gygus in the past, we affected the passage of fate a little bit over thousands of years, and the Earth wound up just a few extra miles away from the sun, so sunstroke is no longer possible. White and black sesame seeds still get no resolution. Because they're only one pixel! This, it's not like a... Wait. Oh, 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 oh! Ah, Ness, my husband has been returning home late these days. He says he's busy. Yeah! I know he's out saving the earth, but a marriage is also important. Ooh, we've caught him in his web of lies. The world doesn't need saving any longer, and he's still coming home late. Scandalous. One HP attack, can we just watch? One HP of mortal damage! Ness got hurt and collapsed! Are you ready? The game over screen doesn't come up at all. I'm on this black screen with the game over music and for years people assumed that this was a crash due to the game not knowing where to put you after beating Gygus. But it turns out that's not the case at all. It has nothing to do with beating Gygus and it's not even a crash and I can prove it. Holding left. Ha ha! The game doesn't know where to put you, so it puts you back on the field where you were with the boss to spawn, but with no graphics. As I thought, the Prophecy 4 total our only chance for success. Please enjoy the life ahead of you as a regular boy. That is a good reward. People don't realize how underrated such things can really be. Status quo can be a good thing. You're here! We have little, but stay and rest for a while. But I'm impressed. You did so well for one who hasn't had much training. We didn't have much, you know, just a solid gold castle and solid gold furniture to fill it and red carpets rolling around everywhere. I guess it is kind of small for a castle only having two rooms, but yeah, we didn't have much. Cannot believe you made it back alive. Swing your girlfriend, do -si do Sh Hi, I'm a yellow sesame seed. Nobody will ever love me. There haven't been any differences so far in Deep Darkness other than the water itself not being hurty, yet I've been curious about this. It's useless broken. Nobody's in the pilot seed. You heard him. It's useless broken. Remember when I said I wanted to have free inventory space? You bet I want a bicycle. You know how long I've been waiting to be free? You can only do this after saying goodbye to Paula. Uh. <laughs> 
That was a little funny how jammed up that became. <laughs> Hello, it's your dad! <laughs> You've been out there for a long time now. It may be none of my business, but don't you think it'd be a good idea if you took a break? Dad, I am taking a break from, from all this sleeping. Uh... I'd like to go back to bed. Ah, I see. Well, it doesn't make me happy, but I understand your point about the fate of the world being at stake. He's not actually coming home for my birthday, is he? Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy! Welcome back to more Earthbound! Last time, we met the world that we helped cause. And this time, we're gonna see if we can't destroy it! <laughs> The three tent glitch is something that I have talked about a few different times already up to this point, but just as a quick refresher, I advise not doing this on an original release. Stuff. No problem here, 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 no problem here. Uh, let's rearrange ourselves a little bit. No problem here, no problem here, no problem here. The town is at peace, but my wife and kids won't- Oh. <laughs> Get out of here! Screw you and screw your wife. Except not like how I said it. At least I didn't say screw your kids, okay? Nice. Away. QA. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Whoa! That's all it took. E. E. E? Is it gonna... Oh, VV? Whoa! That was magical! Is it... Is that like some kind of PSI effect with corrupted graphics that I loaded in where the correct stuff wasn't there because I wasn't in a battle? Cause wow, that was really magical. <laughs> oh, do, 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 do. Ooh, Yoso. Font Yoso again. Girl, Yoso confusing. Oh. It didn't do this last time it dumped me here. Oh, what? I'm warping again. Oh, uh. Uh, I'm walking while text is printing out on the screen. And now warp. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> it's slowing down the game. Uh huh. If that's scary. <laughs> if you can't equip an item, the window is black. Rough. I thought you'd like to know. Now it's time to become a regular dog again. Whatever you say. Oh. Uh. The game just died. <laughs> Is this truly being a real dog? Uh, I can't move. I can't move anymore. It's still doing something. All right. I almost wanna, you know what? Okay. I don't normally do this, but this is way too cool. I wanna go out that door, but I also don't wanna lose what I already have because the game exploded last time I went out the door. So let's make a save. And then touch the door. Okay, my movement is locked. What? It actually let me out! Uh-oh. Uh 
<laughs> Listen! That's one leaky hiccup you got there, buddy! There we go. Whoa! -ho -ho! You engage the mad taxi! Oh! <laughs> you know what? Why the heck not? <laughs> Let's do some PSI here. <laughs> It's making those sound effects as I move in the menu. I wish I had a multi-bottle rocket right now, but it wouldn't look as pretty. It's displaying the Jackie's Cafe graphics right now. Huh. All right, what's this gonna look like? Admittedly, not as much of a train wreck as I thought it was going to. Uh, all right. Apparently I reek of glitches and you want nothing to do with me. Come back! <laughs> um... Let's go to the top of the theater and see what the Venus show looks like right now. Oh my god, this is gonna be atrocious! Cool stuff. Why? <laughs> and I can move around again. Meat, slice it into pieces about half an inch thick. Hang the pieces on a laundry line or something like it. And leave it out in the sun for maybe six months. Well, that's what my recipe, well, that's what my recipe says. When eaten, you recover about 150 HP, if you say so. Oh! Black Antoid What? <laughs> Black, congratulations, Black Antoy! <laughs> you can also leave anything you don't need with me! <laughs> Shut up, Tracy! What? <laughs> she said K! <laughs> uh, I got the, un the unread email of death in the corner. I just want to say that all of this is in the first hour, and I said I'd go for three. <laughs> Doing the hurry up motion with my hand. Oh. Ooh. Why is it? Man, V is the new Q. I guess it's in vogue. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> and it sounds horrific. Uh, days weather. Oh! I got unused text! That's the unused three. I found a way to make a display in game! That's the newspaper headline from After Ness and Paula get captured, but before Jeff Cat rescues them. I mean, technically, the. T.O. is still unused. And I can never live to tell the tale because this is an endless game again. I'm just fascinated by the fact that I can actually move around while it does this. Can't talk to anybody. Ocarina of Time 2 confirmed. Actually, has room to take these. What about you? Yes. Oh, this is a status ailments menu. Ness, why don't you do it yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I 
I didn't know that was going to diamondize him. <laughs> that's, that's kind of amazing. Uh... I'm kind of sad that we don't have access to a photo spot right now, be- Whoa! I guess I do! <laughs> the audio's still going. That's not a challenge. It looks like it kind of says bow in an abstract sense, like B-O. It doesn't like me leaving rooms, though, is the thing. Like, it's not truly the debug mode, it's a very glitched out version of the debug mode. <laughs> I turned into a padlock? What else can you do for me? Let's try some other number. Let's do 64, my favorite. <laughs> do continue, please. Don't let this be an endless loop. Don't let this be an endless loop, please. Don't let this be an endless loop. You can do it, game. It's like I'm encouraging it to march toward a horrible, fiery death. Uh, whoa! It's dancing to the techno. Is that this to zero? Does that mean I get to play a game of Earthbound inside of a copy of Earthbound? One. I guess it kind of does. Anything else? on top of the cartridge, but the player's guide included with every copy has used the lowercase b, the uppercase b, and EARTHBOUND! The official logo seems to suggest that it should use an uppercase normally, but is sometimes MOTHER! Though all caps for English text is not exactly uncommon when it comes to Japanese things having English written titles. Third, it has the options flag, goods, Save, apple, and a banana. Does? He heals damage dealing ailments. Meaning he gets rid of the cold, sunstroke, and poison. Buddy, you're healing Alpha in an expensive white coat! Well, with poisoning he's healing Beta, yet again, when are you gonna get poisoned when you don't already know healing Beta? Did you know? But Ness's dad is a tree! No. If you wait out the two hours for Ness's dad to call, it's not programmed correctly to handle you being on a bicycle at the time. The phone ringing will replace the sound effect in memory for ringing the bicycle bell, and it doesn't go back the way it's supposed to. Meaning... Car horn! Come on, I ain't getting any younger, move it! Those pixels that are inside the cave right there, I've always thought they look really silly, and it's kind of an unfortunate byproduct of the position of the pixels and the fact that they're mirrored. A lot of people have different images that they see inside of it, and for me personally, it's always looked like a cartoony bug wearing a samurai helmet. I didn't have a chance to show. First off, let's go back into the room where all this happens in, just so you can see how br Oh my god, you can get into the fight again even though you're already dead? Alright, we're doing that. I'm gonna guess that we just get hurt and collapse instantly. <laughs> the single greatest piece of Earthbound lore is that Earthbound was in an episode of Frasier! <laughs> I'm holding in my hands right now a response to my mock pizza air freshener postcard that I sent into Nintendo. I haven't opened this yet, but I will show you what is in it. <laughs> 
I've had a lot of people asking about updates on this, and I just simply haven't had an update until now. But thought I would record my first reaction to it, and we'll open this. Butter knives do not make very good letter openers, or I just suck. I'm trying to be delicate because this is technically an Earthbound collectible. Whatever is in here is an Earthbound collectible because it is the official canon response to whatever they say if you send one of these things in now. I'm expecting this to not be an air freshener, but I've heard of people sending in outdated stuff and getting interesting things back, so let's find out. Dear Emil, thanks for sending in this submission slip. I'm sorry for the delay in our reply. The slip was a huge blast from the past for me. This is straight out of a fairly odd issue of Nintendo Power Magazine. I used to have a subscription when I was a kid, and Nintendo Power really helped me out of a few binds and some Super NES titles. However, I need to note a few things that may be disappointing to hear. This Earthbound contest unfortunately has ended quite some time ago. Additionally, the Nintendo Power Magazine has ceased publication as of December 2012. That said, it may interest you to know that there is a Nintendo Power podcast, that which is an official podcast by Nintendo of America. You can find them on SoundCloud, HTTPS, SoundCloud.com, or by searching Nintendo Power Podcast. It may be something you'll enjoy. Also, along with this response, I've included a few small items as, a to as tokens of our appreciation. Thanks again for sending this in and for being a fan. Sincerely, Nintendo of America, Inc. And included with this are... Oh, they are bookmarks of Peach and Zelda. <laughs> Skyward Sword Zelda and I think Mario Party 10 Peach, if wanting to say what this art, these art assets are from. Okay. That's a lot more than I was expecting, and it continues the trend of excellent customer service experiences that I've had with them. <laughs> so there you go. That is what happens when a one of those postcards is sent in. So now that there's been a face cam in the series, does that make this a live-action reboot? No. Either way, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys then.